Man versus machine. It's the ultimate test of our physical human limits compared to our human knowledge limits. Throughout history, we've used machine automation to make our lives easier, more efficient. It gives us more time to do bigger and better things, whether it's for the prosperity of our species or in the pursuit of uncovering more knowledge about our universe. Today, we're going to show you the next generation of autonomy, this time in the drone industry and with the help of Christian Pfeiffer, the Robotics and Perception Group from the University of Zurich, and the ultimate testing environment, drone racing. So hang on a moment, who is the Robotics and Perception Group and what do they do? So we are 15 engineers, computer scientists, one neuroscientist, and uh, we basically all work to together on uh, building uh, autonomous vision-based drones. That's Christian. He's a neuroscientist that flies FPV. He's also the man that invited Marvin, the Swiss drone champion, Alex Vanover, DRL world champion, and myself, two-time international open world champion, to visit them and benchmark themselves against us. His research is focused on understanding the relationship between our human eye movements and our control inputs. Now you know who's involved, but why go through all this trouble of understanding how humans fly, and why dive into such a complex task such as drone racing, let alone trying to match or even outperform the best drone pilots? Right now, we want to build vision-based navigation drones that uh, could be useful for search and rescue. So one of our dream scenarios is this, you have a collapsed building, unknown environment, uh, GPS wouldn't work inside and you want to find survivors. We want to find survivors quickly. Why? Because drones have limited battery life, as you know, so if you hover forever and if you're not tethered, then the battery will deplete, right? So one advantage of going fast is you can accomplish more and you can use the battery life effectively to a limit, right? If you always go at the full, <laughs> full power, maybe not, but as compared to very slow systems, three meters per second, I think we can do much better. So there you go. That's the who and why. Now let's cut to why you're here the race. The first thing to note is there are two separate AI race drones that we're competing against. The first system, which for the sake of simplicity we will call the Vicon system, consists of a completely standard racing drone fitted with at least four tracking markers. These are exactly the same as what's used for CGI motion tracking in movies. Along the roof of the flight arena, there are 36 cameras operating at 400 frames per second. These track the drone in 3D space send that data to a computer which uses that information to compute flight commands that are sent to the drone via TBS Tracer. Now hearing this you might think that's cheating or that can only work in a highly controlled environment and you would be correct. 100% knowledge of our location in space is not a luxury human pilots have. The entire purpose of this experiment stems from three principal concepts that the engineers have to understand and quantify in order to achieve high speed autonomous flight. These are perception, the ability to perceive the environment around you, planning, which is having automated, high quality decision making, and finally control, the ability to pilot the craft safely and effectively. Using external motion tracking completely eliminates the problem of perception and allows the lab to purely focus on understanding and optimizing planning and control at speed. Then we have the second system. The second system which we can call the vision drone, is the main reason we were flown out. This flies through an onboard camera, no different to how a drone pilot like you and me would fly. By using the knowledge gained from the Vicon system and combining it with their research about visual perception, they aim to have a drone that can effectively fly as good or better than a human can. Should this be successful, they will be a massive step closer to their goal of having drones that are capable of piloting themselves at speed in uncontrolled, time-sensitive environments with almost no need to interface with external networks or computers. One more note to make. The AI drones both utilize the latest and greatest research in machine learning or neural networking to learn how to fly each given track, and they are pre-trained using a combination of simulation environments followed by real-world deployments. This means that the AIs have essentially spent tens of thousands of hours training on these two tracks alone. For that reason, prior to the race, us human pilots were given some extra time to learn the tracks and try to get as comfortable on them as possible. That being said, we were never given any data on how fast or capable their systems were. 
All we had for reference was our own logic, which suggested that if they had flown Alex and myself over for their experiment, they must have had something really special. So, we survived the first night in Zurich. A uh, massive flight, absolutely wrecked today, even though I actually slept really well. Um, today we're going to the university, we're going to meet all the guys, do a bit of flying. I think Van Over will be there too, which is awesome, so I'll get to see him again. And I think today I'm just going to take a really chill because I don't want to destroy everything. We're flying in a hangar, so crashing means destruction. Here at some JS ones, and these are what we'll be racing against. So this is the sensorless drone, so the one that the buildings are fully controlling. And yeah, they're using JS ones, very similar setups to what I run component-wise. And yeah, it'll be controlled by a computer, a JS one that's unmanned and unhuman piloted. JS one AI. Yeah. I'm stealing Alex's settings because he's too fast. <laughs> Please do not judge my tuning abilities based on the settings that you're taking. I slapped a preset on there, but if it's really good, then you can judge my tuning abilities on that. <laughs> judge it if it's good, but don't if it's bad. Okay. What do you think about your performance and what do you expect the autom Autonomous Drone can do? Yeah, I think my performances have been great. I got a lot of time on the track. Thomas is getting a lot of time on the track. I feel great. Give me a slow drone, big heavy drone, ready to go. I think that um, I predict that the AI drone is going to be a little bit slower and also not nearly as consistent. I mean, I may not be the most consistent pilot with the 6S quad, but you give me this 4 s slow drone and I can do five and a half second laps every time like clockwork. So and I'm not even hitting full throttle yet. You guys don't even know what I can do yet. Just like I don't know what you can do. So I predict that uh, BLS Thomas and I uh, in 2023 are back here. We're doing this all over again. And you know, we'll just carry on my merry way, so. A hectic day, but it's been really fun. Uh -huh. First international trip in the books, best international flight. Done. But yeah, I think the goal will be for now. Well, the goal for today was to learn the lines, get comfortable, get used to how you guys operate and everything, how to work with you. I think we achieved that. Next step, hopefully, be more awake tomorrow. Uh, try and push for some more lap time, but still safe. Mm -hmm. um, that tends to be the approach. I take lots of baby steps. So I was trying to keep stepping it up. Hopefully, we don't break anything. Fingers crossed. We'll see. But yeah, we'll keep going. During the week of training, the university was collecting all the flight data from the human pilot's training sessions, from racing lines through to lap times and black box data, without providing the human pilots any information on the AI drone's performance. In our last two video releases, we only showed the AI drone flying absolutely flawlessly, which when it does is spectacular. However, not all the AI flights are so successful. On Friday, the official experiment day for their paper, and Saturday, the public race day, data collection didn't go as planned. 
Because of this, the university needed to squeeze in an additional day of race data collection on Monday, just before Alex and myself were to fly back home. Okay, Alex, yes. Yeah. Yeah. run us through what occurred there. Man, it was not a great race, but it was a win. You just, my, my, my start was terrible. This AI drone just launches at the start. I was very surprised, but it crashed like two seconds later. I think I was trash talking the drone beforehand and made it nervous. That's <laughs> the only thing I can think of because it just crashed. That's exactly what happened, isn't it? Literally, it's what happened. I'm in shock. So the key takeaway is, as soon as something deviates from the optimal, these AI drones do start to fall apart and make mistakes and eventually lead to fatal crashes. Today, I think it's our final day here at Swiss Drone Days. G'day, Alex. We're gonna win this race, Thomas. We're gonna win? No, we're gonna win this race. Okay. We have no choice, Thomas. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I think today's our final day here at Swiss Drone Days. We're also racing against the Vicon system, which is the one with the external cameras. We'll see how we go. It'll be interesting. I'm pretty wrecked from last night, but let's have some fun. Let's fly some drones and watch, watch all cool things technology. As expected, the Vicon system was nothing short of spectacular when it worked, and demonstrated the flight code beautifully. And as a bonus, I got to see a glimpse of what my JS1s are really capable of. Cool. Look at that, it's a JS1! Hey, at least if I lose this, I'm losing to JS1, BMS, Motors, R42, Spock, Sea, Flight Stack, so, and Tracer. So it's literally, it's, I'm racing Robot Me. Hopefully Robot Me is less consistent than Real Me. Still, we'll see. It's cool, it's running the same gear as me. So at least if I lose to it, I'm losing to myself essentially, but I don't know, maybe Robot Me is less consistent than Real Me. I'm just going to turn last and have fun and enjoy the show. So. I think it is kind of more of a spectator than the pilot. Let's enjoy it. Unlike a human pilot, both AI drones are not capable of correcting for mistakes, deviations from the flight path, other quads, or correcting if something goes wrong. For example, the AI Vicon drone lost to me because it got stuck to a launcher, but still tried to fly at full throttle and as a result crashed during the race. A human pilot would have backed off and corrected the drone and then proceeded to race the track. It's stacked either way, right? It's it stacked, stacked against you guys. And it's stacked against us. I mean, I had fun. What you'll see here is the Vicon system against Marv FPV. In this case, the human pilot gets a really good start, and the Vicon system also makes it to the finish line. Let's see how they go. As we go live on the 
Tilt in less than five. Lastly, but almost more impressive, was how the Vision Drone performed. Once again, at max performance, it's still missing the precision of a human pilot, but this thing is flying completely from onboard vision, just like a human. It's worth noting here, the university doesn't like the word precision, as they use the word robustness instead, but I realise the robustness in drone racing means something completely different. How do you feel about that one? Very good. <laughs> Christian? <laughs> Clean race that time. Clean race. I will say, I mean, it was very, it was very fast. It wasn't my best flying, but at the same time, it's still... That launch, it just The launch was just it. gone. And I was like, at first I thought I was maybe starting to reel it in, but I was like, I, I, yeah. gotta, I gotta do like 5-2, five, 5-2, two, five, two, five, Yeah, two, like, and I don't think three laps really allows for it. No, yeah. I needed like a five lap race. Yeah. Good though for a human. That was a full <laughs> friend, man. For a human, man. For a human that was, that was a good launch. For a human. Hey. If you look at this next flight, it's me in green LEDs versus the AI vision based drone. At this stage, on the last day of data collection, hours before my flight back home, I'm racing their last vision based drone because the rest of them had crashed out and were not easily repairable. Here you see me trying to get past the AI, but I slow down so as not to hit it. The AIs are currently not able to do this. Once I find a safe overtaking point, I proceed to pass the AI and take the win for the race. The AI currently doesn't have this ability that we humans take for granted. Hopefully this technology can take the next step and actually race against a human in a 100% level playing field. So far, they've been able to demonstrate that they can actually win in some races against human pilots in an extremely controlled environment, which irrespective of how you look at it, is a big deal. Finally, a massive thank you to you for watching. Whether you're new here or a returning viewer, I appreciate your time and hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.